Welcome back in everybody to One Piece chapter 1078. Today we're joined by the lovely Caesar clown himself, Parvision. And oh. I, uh, well, no, no, you be judge because you have kids. Yeah, we have judge here with us, <laughs> Judge Vin Smoke, and Wait, I am Caesar know, clown, your host. How What's do you up? know Caesar doesn't have kids? How do you know gangster Gastino doesn't have kids? He probably does, right? But he probably abandoned them like the Chad he is. JK, oh. that sucks. <laughs> They're both you know just, funny. They, they'd probably both make really bad dads. I would hate to be judged as a dad because my dad is judged. But what's funnier is uh, in the cover story, uh, someone pointed out to me that like both uh, uh, Ichiji, Ichiji and Raju, and Raju are like even. looking away and walking yeah. away. <laughs> They're probably looking at these guys like, yo, two buffoons finally came together. Because you have to imagine, like we've been with this cover page for a span of months, right? Yeah. But to Ichiji and Raju, this was a span of maybe 10 minutes. <laughs> like they brought Caesar here, Judge and him were fighting, and now they're shaking hands in marriage. So, it, it's, yeah, it's something. Not even just the marriage part, right? Like, the, or, or the shaking hands part. Judge has his hand on him like that, and I was yeah. I was pointing out to people that this like this body him, language. Like, oh, yes, yes. My this is this, this body language is so interesting because, like, you know, if you go around the back, right, and do that, right, you got yeah. arm control. You're in a safe spot. But if you do this, Caesar's other arm could easily have a knife and he could just shank him real quick. You know what I mean? Like, that's yeah. not what you do in any kind of Hey, we're, we're looking uh, at situation. absolute trust. Yeah, this is, this is the embodiment trust. of trust. Judge does not think that a Logia gas Caesar man uh, could could be capable of anything more than that. And Of course You know not. what I... I Judge was is like about... top five in the verse. Oh my goodness. You <laughs> he he Judge... wouldn't be taken down by a Logia? Come on. My, my son heard that and he sneezed. He's like, what the hell did he just say? <laughs> <laughs> what did I hear? <laughs> Judge is I top like... three, not top five. I like the uh, the cover story. It was it was good that they said Neo Mads and not Neo Germa because that would have went really bad. Like, Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I, I know. I know what you're trying to get at. Yeah, but what I thought was funny was I, I feel like there has to be at least one theory on Reddit somewhere saying that eventually once Germa got introduced that Caesar would join Germa. The reason why is because the double G's is the double sixes. And so Caesar doesn't have to change anything about his his uh, things. His it's, wardrobe, it's, yeah, he's he's normal. He's, he could just go as he is, and he's totally fine. Yeah, he already had the double sixes, and and now the the branding is still there. And that, you know, you honestly want to see that in a merger of any kind when you don't have to shake up the branding. You know, that's usually why you <laughs> should use. The yeah, one Caesar's branding. clothing is safe in this regard. Yeah, do you it saves think, you so much acquisition costs. Do you, okay, it's so, so do you think this cover page will go on another week, or do you think this is the end? Because I think 33 is a good way to end. 33, 30, 66, come on. Come on. 30, 33 is a good one. Uh, my, my son heard 33 and liked that too. I want this cover story to end. I feel like we wanted this cover story to end before. And sure, we get all the same details. Yeah. Which is like, name it a different cover story. Because at this point, naming it the cold-blooded voyage or voyage, or however you want to say it, is so, like, we already had the cold-blooded. This is now, like, the Mads reform. Why couldn't this be, like, the the mads reunited you know what i mean and then like we got the front the beginning of it where it's like the backstory and when we hear mads reunited it's like oh it's it's a backstory it's a thing and then we get the neo mads it's like oh mads reunited you know what i mean like yeah it, it's it's kind of i can't wait till next week we get a brand new cover story and we switch it up from jerma 66's or double six emotion like his excursion and then we go over to Neo Mads' emotionless excursion. It just, it changes everything. Do you think, do you think Neo Mads is going to make a comeback into the story soon? Or do you think this is the last we'll see of them for a while? Um, Egghead is so odd, right? Because last, um, last panel, we saw, it was all Vegapunk's fault. And that shot yeah. out a lot of people thinking that that was who was the killer. Um, clearly by a chapter it changes this perspective for a lot of people. Um, cause there was a lot of people dead set on that. I, I imagine in both of our streams, there was people like, guys, it's judge, it's judge and Caesar. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know about that one. I feel like every name under the sun was thrown out as a potential culprit, which isn't yeah. bad because that, you know, that just means Oda's doing his job yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, but I, the I, I see some people in the comments section who are like, oh, like, how did you guys not know this? Like, it was right in front of us. People look too deep and it's like we're supposed to like yeah like like if we didn't and if we all knew it was york then it would be a bad mystery 
Like, yeah, like imagine yeah, exactly. we get to Egghead Island and we're like, oh, uh, yeah, it's York. Like, everything points to her. Like, uh, Stella? Of course not, because he has a solid alibi. It's because there's so many random, like, dialogue and sketchiness thrown in here that makes it a mystery. Yeah. No, like, I don't then, think people understand that sometimes, which is kind of crazy. Like, especially in a murder mystery type of thing, which is a sentiment that most people felt. It's like, you can't just know the answer from episode one or or no you can't instinctively if you were a detective and you were trying yeah. to find someone who's a culprit just because your instincts and you see the line of logic for one person doesn't mean you shouldn't investigate all the other leads just yeah. to be sure right like it's, and that's it's like how a judge is being impartial like <laughs> like yeah. imagine you go to court and you're like oh this guy's guilty i'm not gonna yeah. look at the evidence and then, and then, like uh, the irony is, is like, well, if you just looked at like one other person, the second person, and you just like ask them a simple question, they probably would have spilled the beans, right? Like it's as simple yeah. as that. Where it's like you see in our world where people don't do that, they're like, oh, it was him. He's at the scene of the crime. His blood was all over him. It has to be him. And then the other guy just gets away. And then you see them get interrogated one time, and then they fold. They fold immediately, and they're like, fifty years all down the drain because. We didn't talk to this guy one time. Because right? of that meddling dog in their crew. Yeah, I want that. I want it to be said. I, w I want them to be like, ah, yeah. if it wasn't for Luffy and those yeah. meddling kids. <laughs> it just ends up being Velma. Yeah, yeah, Go yeah. Go to show. But, you know, the, in terms of, like, the Neo Mads coming back, like, I don't want them to come on Egghead because they'll, yeah. they need, I need them to cook. I need them to take their time, go to their chamber, you know, set up the gas, hook it up and you know create the germa beauty that that people know what if of. they make something and better than than seraphims do you think that's, that's possible? Not possible no i don't think that's possible that'd be crazy but, though but what they could like something i'm almost than that, they create like zombies you know what i mean like zombies zombies that are plagued like you touch them you what about you like soldiers <laughs> Yeah, like gas soldiers that are zombies instantly infecting you and then they blow up on like touch. I've <laughs> seen some people like, especially on your stream, said that maybe Neo Mads will go to Impel Down and rescue Queen. Yeah. I, I kind of like that idea. We yeah, all yeah, expect yeah. an Impel Down break. We know Odo wants an Impel Down break because he mentioned it beforehand for Film Red. Like that was his original idea. Yeah. So it's like Impel Down 2.0 is going to happen soon. If Judge and Caesar are the cause of it, I'm totally cool with that. If they want to go pick up their homeboy queen, amen. You know, like power to them. So onto the chapter though, we get inside of the Egghead Laboratory and we see that Stussy and Jinbei are still flying through and she's talking to Sentomaru about Ohara. And they, you know, they just say, hey, watch out. Some bad things are going to happen. Vegapunk, he's kind of a bad guy in the government's eyes. He has a lot of weapons at his disposal. So they're sending everyone. We got... Admiral Kizaru, we have CP0, we have the whole Banjo-Kazooie here. And that the, the citizens band. should escape. Do you think these citizens will escape safely? Have have the citizens ever escaped safely? No. I mean, honestly... I, I, I really don't think so. Like, I, I see the citizens escaping, and it's such a minor panel where I'm like, maybe this will come into play somehow, but I just feel like they're going to get Sakazuki'd, bro. I just look at, I mean, I didn't really care much for the citizens, which we should really never do because they never really matter. <laughs> but like, like all they're there is for the panel at the end, like praying to some God, but these guys aren't going to be praying to some God like in Skypea, right? But the main thing is like, there's a dude that looks just like Frankie in like middle left of that runaway panel. Oh, I see panel. him. Yeah, he has the Frankie chin and uh, he has the mohawk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in the middle, there's this, like, in the very center, there's this, like, little hooded dude who is there last chapter, and his eyes last chapter just look like Edison. And I, like, you know, by the end of it, I'm not suspecting Edison, obviously, by this chapter, but, like, Edison's kind of sus. Is he trying to escape, too? Like, he's just like, oh, no, I gotta leave. I don't trust these Vegapunks. <laughs> Stella's just trying to leave for herself. I think it's interesting that we still haven't seen the designs of who those little people exactly are. Yeah. Like, because uh, the, the first thing that I go to is just the automata from Anel's cover story and the, you know, how, how they're on the moon and everything and how they're futuristic. So I'm like, it could be them, but we just never got the design. Like, even now, they're just like Ewoks. They're just hooded figures. Yeah. And like, why? It's so fascinating. We talked about this. But then again, like you said, they might, they might just not matter. Like, if these guys get blown up, it's sad. Don't get me wrong. But we haven't really developed any with them. Like, at least for Wano, we spent like 
20 chapters with Tama, Abisu Town. Like, we spent so much time with all the citizens in every arc, even Fisherman Island. Like, we were sitting around talking to Nika, Chika, and Sika. Like, you know, those, those like, the, the quintuples. We, we talked to the, the yeah, mermaids yeah. at the Shark Cafe. We talked to so many random civilians. This is the one arc where we don't do that. And while I'm thankful for how the progression has fit this arc, it's also like, if these guys get Sakazuki'd, like, will we really shed a tear, though? I'm gonna I'm be honest. Maybe it's a hot take, but, like, in Onigashima, most of the samurais could have died. Like, they could have <laughs> said that. They could have showed their dead bodies. If Tama was fine, I'm fine. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. everybody else As long as the died. people that we know are okay. Yeah, like, like but even, like, Hyogoro. Like, Hyogoro could have gone. I love Hyogoro. I'm about to make a whole video about him. And... Hey, it, it, it's sometimes it's your time. Sometimes it's I, this that time. Okay, I, I don't want to bring bring it back to Wana for too long because we're on Egghead. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Ashura Doji should have lived. Ashura Doji should have lived. I I am so baffled that he's actually dead. It still <laughs> hasn't hit me a hundred percent yet. Like we had Pell survive an atomic bomb, and you're Pero telling me Ashura Doji couldn't. An arm. Yeah, Pedro Spedo lost an arm to dynamite that killed Pedro, and you're telling me Ashura Doji couldn't survive a bomb too insane and Ashur doji has rio like <laughs> bro all right anyways and he back to egg child <laughs> back, back to egghead because you know just thinking about Ashur doji i just feel so bad for the man yeah yeah so past the sentumaru portion we see that frankie's half stoned up and one thing that i found really interesting is that while s snake goes out of her way to kill pythagoras she doesn't kill frankie or even petrify him all the way she just kind of leaves him there which or, makes me wonder if killing the Straw Hats was even their prerogative in the first place. No, I like a 1,000, side because, because you know, later we get the S-Hawk thing, and that's yeah. also confusing. But here's here's the confusing thing in this situation. Is this... Okay, so so he crushes, crushes uh, Pythagoras, right? Yeah. Explodes the back, right? Yeah. Frankie is, like, in, in the stone, whatever, and he's like... Er, er, you know what I mean? He's like backing up from it. What about L Usopp and Lilith? Like, there's stone. She blows him up. And, like, why didn't she destroy Lilith? Yeah, see, I almost want to say that Lilith is the safest Vegapunk simply because while Pythagoras is stepped on, Shaka's shot, Lilith being in stone, if she gets unstoned, she is perfectly fine, unscathed even. So, I, I almost want to say that Lilith might be the sole survivor of Egghead. And I saw one really cool theory about how Neo Mads is being formed. If Lilith and Stella both survive, Lilith would probably join Neo Mads. She would fit right in. And True. it's like, you know what? That would be kind of cool. I'm down for that theory. Uh, I forgot who commented that, but it was in the last video. I think yeah, that's a go-to like theory. Lilith for Neo Mads, I'm down for it. If she has blonde hair and blue eyes, even better, right? <laughs> Judge would, yeah, Judge would have Sora 2.0. Here we go. Oh, no, not Sora 2.0. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Judge is going to make a whole new Sanji. Oh, oh no. man. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> oh, wait. Then those theories weren't wrong. That Lilith is Sanji's mom, if that's the loop around. Because, hey, we did not say stepmom. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, <laughs> speaking of stepmom, Pythagoras got the foot, bro. Oh, <laughs> bad. <laughs> Feels bad for bad Pythagoras. Transition. <laughs> so, moving on, though, uh, we go to floor two of building A. We see Robber, or Robber, <laughs> I combine the <laughs> names, Robin, Chopper, and Atlas. They're flying down to where the Stella body is. And it's really interesting because Atlas is a little bit suspect, in my opinion. I'm not 100% sold on Atlas being a co-conspirator with the traitor who we later find out to be York. Who sold you those drugs, though? The community. Okay, okay. Right, fair, this is fair, this fair. has been uh, this this is something people were talking about since Sunday Bar. Come on. Ah uh, no, but the Atlas thing. You know, I was selling those drugs before Sunday. Oh, but but Atlas and York though. Ah, uh, fair. But fair, but fair. I I I, I, st I still drugs. believe it's just truly York. But got it, got it, got it. When you think about Robin, Chopper, and Atlas showing up against York, it's like theoretically they should be able to beat York. The only right. way I can see York pulling out the W is either she has some crazy weapon at her disposal, maybe a hidden Seraphim, or perhaps Atlas is on her side. That's kind of where I'm at, but I, I don't know. Robotic, so she could easily have the bubble thing imbued in her body. 
we do know that she has a robotic uh frame right so yeah and considering she was like the police right on uh, on the what fabio phase yeah fabio yeah. phase she was essentially the police i wouldn't be surprised if she had the defense system at the minimum like the defense bubble that the kumas have i you know Lilith had the cannon, but like maybe she has the bubble hey, thing. And those imagine... defense bubbles did not help against Luchi if she has them. Which would be, I, I think that would, the whole ploy, right, would be interesting. Ah, that's a good one. That's but here's the thing: like look at. Atlas got one tapped by Luchi. Yeah, of course, Luchi is probably one of the stronger characters here. But it's like I would like to think Chopper and Robin versus Atlas and York. I, I still want to give it to Robin and Chopper. Like oh, I, I, if... I just feel like they wouldn't. Fall every to these guys. time, every time Vegapunk has shown like uh, they improve based off of failure, right? Yeah. Like the Seraphims, the battle data, all that stuff, right? Alice got repaired. Who's to say that they put the same parts? Maybe they took in that battle data and then they made her better. And so maybe she's more durable. Not saying Seraphim durable, but you know, Robin throws out that Fishman Karate hand slap, and then Alice is just like, dude, Robin one hand, one Atlas. finger. Robin would just make giant hands and just break it like a toy from Toy Story. Uh, like, I don't want to. I don't want to play with you want anymore. That. No, you're, like, you're right. I don't know. It would have to be. The thing is, it would have to be a situation where they're just caught off guard. If there's yeah, any it would, kind it of would thing. have to be like caught off guard, or it could be the gravity boots, right? Technically, they all have the boots on, and we know that they could stick to the ground. So maybe that's the plan here. Maybe York just activates it and they can't move. You can't I, stop I could see Robin's that hands, though. You can't yeah, stop Rob, Robin's Robin still hands. has the hands. Dang, you're yeah, right. Yeah, those hands can do what a lot. If, and what if there's sea stone that activates in the clothing? Since they were all forced to get clothing when they got here, that's too. I mean, I'm for that. I like that. But I feel like that's that's such people would be like, oh, how convenient. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that. That's one of those things. Especially after we got the bubble thing introduced, it's like you already have an element there. If you can just throw in that. Oh yeah. By the way, the clothes can have like a flip switch sea stone thing. People. A lot of people, regardless of if it falls with their agenda, I feel like they would be like, eh, that wasn't my favorite part it's too of, OP. of that development. Yeah, and like you know, I think the caught off guard thing is the main thing for why atlas being a suspect to me still makes sense because for it to work yeah it would have to be something that they're they created trust with atlas throughout this entire process and then atlas is guiding them hey that reminds me there's a room that's been sealed off it's like robin maybe you shouldn't go to a sealed off room like you know what i mean like that sounds like a very bad place to go with the stranger but yet you're gonna go with the stranger i mean i didn't teach chopper Ch uh, stranger danger he's the gullible one hopefully robin gets the gets the sense of it but you know are they gonna suspect atlas after all of what they've been through you know with the vega punks and all that stuff they haven't had a the straw hats themselves unless robin pulls a nine thousand gigabrain thing which is possible you know i don't think in imagine story, robin outsmarts the vega punks <laughs> yeah like yeah, but in crazy, story the i mean straw i can see hats, it the straw hats don't necessarily have like a huge like reason to suspect the vega punks right or at least yeah. we haven't had like panels where robin's been like question marking things or usopp's like you know we had that one thing where usopp was looking over shaka's shoulder and people were like oh usopp's gonna outsmart vega punk which would be great which would be great but then look how that hey, came yeah. out got turned to stone usopp <laughs> like, definitely outsmarted vega punk yeah yeah i've read yeah. i read the last chapter it was all part of his plan <laughs> but like robin is a character that She's been running her whole life, and maybe she has the smarts for it. I don't know. I mean, she but... has the smarts to say that it's the Seraphim probably going on a rampage here, too. Like, not even Atlas considered that, saying, no, that's incomprehensible. So it's like, yeah, you know, Robin, she's onto something. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And, you know, like, uh, the Atlas thing, uh, which we'll talk about and recontextualize once we get to the end of the chapter, but, like... Atlas's role here is nebulous, right? Because um, the Robin development, as we find out later, like they, no, nobody planned for that unless someone did, which there was like an interesting thing that we can talk about uh, once we, I don't, yeah, we haven't gotten to it, but like it, the whole context of this traitor thing, I feel like at some point, regardless if it's York or Alice, it's going to involve the holograms. I just feel like it is because of the way we're introduced to it. 
um, people like uh, th- the sentiment was there with Kazaru, right? People use like, oh, holograms, we're going to get Kazaru. That ended up being right. Whether or not that ends up panning out, like the photonic gloves relate to Kazaru. And we see like Vegapunk like manhandling Kazaru, which would be really weird. Or like tickling him, which would be weirder. Um, like the holograms were brought in as like subterfuge. Like they were brought into like, like they were tricking Luffy, you know? So I feel like that's what would be its use case later on in the story. And I, I kind of want to see that happen. Regardless if it's York or Alice. It's, it might be yeah. that's how York and Atlas both... Or York had implemented all the things that they did through holograms. It's it's Easy. interesting because even now with the answer here that it's York being the tra- like the main traitor, there, there's still like that possibility that there's a second one or a co-conspirator, which is why people think Atlas might be it. But I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm not 100% sold on it still. I, I yeah. still want to believe that it's just York. But I can I can see the reasonings as to why people believe that Atlas has a part to play in it. Yeah. yeah. It's 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 interesting. Those and like like you good. said, like they talk about holograms. Atlas said that they could change their face a couple chapters ago. It's very sus dialogue. You can't look at that dialogue and say, oh, yeah, that's, that's normal, of course. Yeah. Like, Oda put like, it there to throw, you know, throw us off the trail that York is the traitor. Or yeah. it could be also evidence that Atlas is helping out. Like, it, it could be either one. Oda, he still has tricks up his sleeve. So even though we have the answer, we don't know if that's exactly true yet until we see Atlas in the room. Which, and plus, you know, going... if Atlas was a co-conspirator, then like like we said, it would, it would be the best bet to subdue Robin and Chopper. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and we, you know, we'll add to a reason why we talked about it on the stream, but going back to what our earlier conversation about suspecting people, it's like, yes, York was shown to us, but like, you almost don't like, we don't have motive. We don't have the backstory. We don't know how, they like, I don't think anybody it. guessed the York wants to be a celestial dragon. Yeah. That, one that, was that the wasn't exactly thing. on the bingo cards, but like, even then, and, and so many people said it in the chat was like, uh, right now, the reveal is lukewarm to them because you Oda now has to go back and explain how York implemented this entirely, right? And me and you, we came up with a with a, a, a plethora of explanations for every single thing, going back to every panel in the stream. But like, you know, it's still one of those things that it's like you can easily add an accomplice, you can easily add like a curtain in front of it, a hologram accomplice. There's so many different ways, right? Like, yeah, we, we're in the future. In, yeah, and, and and there's, you know, it's like having AI just take over like your social media accounts. Like, did a person write this or was it AI? Like, you can't even tell nowadays. Yeah, yeah unless exactly. it's the Biden blast. Biden blast is the best AI. So, moving <laughs> on, floor three of Building A, we have Nami, Brooke, and Edison. Edison <laughs> barely holding on for dear life, man. Yeah. We just have him spitting out an ugh. We see an X on his eye. Like the, the guy's not doing too well. And then Brooke also runs off to Vegapunk, and technically, he should be the second closest next to Atlas's group. So I feel like he might make it there too, but he doesn't really know where to look. So he might be going, like, floor to floor until he actually gets to Vegapunk. I did, did this... So in the chapter when I read it, What's about up? it I stopped a few times, and, like, you know, sometimes things bother you, and you just yeah. kind of, like, accept it, move on, right? Otherwise, like, you're just, like, negative for no reason. Brooke having the... the the astral projection having whatever ghostly form this is that he can go through walls i stopped and i was like why don't you just use this from the start he had no like he could just left his body with like luffy and just insta searched everywhere like which is what he did ev- like nearly every arc in the time skip with fisherman island and onigashima i don't even remember if he did it one more time i f- punk hazard maybe i don't punk remember. hazard while he was looking for momonosuke yeah, I think there, there there was at least three. At least three, right? And like here, it's like, huh, you're searching for somebody. You know what would be better than you running around using the thing that goes through walls and nobody can stop you? I don't know. Kind of crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. So I stopped there and I was like, did that bother you when you read that? No. I, I think <laughs> I think Brooke going in his like actual physical form is fine. Because considering yeah. we have so many groups splitting up, right? Like, mm. somebody's got to protect Nami. Like, if Brooke was just in his astral form, like, how is he going to protect Nami? How is he going to protect Edison? Like, if they're already splitting up to so many groups. Like I, I feel like, I feel like they need Brooke in his physical form because if somebody, if Sanji didn't show up, right, Brooke was going to step in and attack S-Shark. So I feel like Brooke was needed. 
Mm -hmm. So I feel mm -hmm. like it's not it's not super weird that he didn't do this in the first place, unless he he offered to do it in the first place and everybody else stayed in the room with him. Then that'd be fine. But, this is a little bit of a theory yeah. thing, but do you think Brooke could throw his uh, ghost into like the Jinbei Seraphim and like take it over? Probably not, but okay. I, I like the yeah. idea though. I, I like where the thought process was. Fair enough, fair enough. If he had something right. like that, I think it'd be cool if he did the same to like Big Mom Homies in a way. Yeah, he like hide. Since they're like a partial soul, he just take he just mm -hmm. hijacks it. But. Exactly. Uh, moving on though, we see we see Sanji getting punched. Oh my god, Sanji's gone. KO'd. Just kidding. He takes <laughs> zero damage from the gym base seraphim. You almost had me there. It's, Sanji. it's yeah, I almost had you. Like it's almost like we just get the chapter, it's like, oh yeah. god, wait, did he really? Yeah, I was like, wait. Your head. Oh, Sanji's gone. No, he takes zero damage. Such a Has cool show. Like we folded. only have two panels. Dope. Yeah. Love he to see arm it. folded. People are like, damn, he didn't even damage the cigarette. And yeah, I'm the like, cigarette is untouched, bro. He's still smoking it. Like, I want to almost think that Sanji had the for like the observation hockey to move it, like right over the fist. Yeah. And then he just like tanked the hit. It's it's incredible considering, you know, like S Shar uh, S Hawk and an S Bear, we saw their defensive capabilities against Luffy and Zoro, but we yeah. haven't seen their offensive. The offensive mainly for Jinbei one was like it wasn't like super out there, right? Jinbei clashed with it earlier, but it wasn't, you know, like maybe these guys aren't like strong. You know, the durability is the main yeah, thing. Yeah, durability but wise, I feel like they're crazy, but yeah, we don't know their offensive capabilities yet. Like even when Kuma used the the Urusu shock, like Luffy, Luchi, Zoro, and Kaku, like they they didn't even were they weren't even phased by it. We cut to yeah. the next page and those guys are already attacking, like no damage on them whatsoever. Yeah. So who's to say the Seraphim aren't strong, but let's be real. They have Lunarian DNA, Devil Fruits. This one I has mean, Fishman DNA. I'd like to imagine that this was a really strong punch. But Sanji's just tanking it like, an, like a regular Seraphim in a way. He's tanking are it this, like Lunarian. Are the Seraphims dumb? Because isn't, isn't a part of King's power, he turns out the flame and then, like, I, I might be wrong on this, right? His offensive capabilities go up once the flame is down and defensive goes down. But he was also mag, like, throwing out magma and fire, right? Like, and that was a part of his Lunarian powers, too. I don't know if his flame was down. I don't think it was. I think he, there is a panel where he was throwing out fire and he had the flame on his back. But can't all the Seraphims technically just, like, Magu Magu no Mi? Like, you know what I mean? Like, throw out fire? I don't know. Like, that could just be a king technique in general. Like we don't know if, so... if we, we don't know if the the lava technique that King did was a Lunarian ability or not. Like that could just be his adoration for Kaido, right? Because it looks Ooh. just like Kaido. Wait, because then you're saying that's low key like elemental hockey. You know what I mean? Because if it's not Lunarian, it could and be it's not his devil fruit. fruit. Oh, stop it, bro! Oda, it. dude, Oda doesn't know his animals. He's mean <laughs> with it, bro. What? What? He made Sasuke fly with his uh with his fins. Yeah, but he didn't have uh, him shoot out magma. Queen, Queen can like curl up into a turd and shoot his head out. <laughs> like if King with his pterodactyl fruit can turn into lava, you know what? Low be it for me to stop Oda. Like maybe <laughs> I didn't read the dinosaur. No, books. but he didn't. He didn't do it in his pterodactyl form. He did it with his sword, right? Like he's just like throwing it around. Maybe the sword is special, but that sword was scuffed too. Like it wasn't that scuffed. It's kind of cool, but like you know what I mean. Like where did that? If if you, if it's not because now I'm kind of curious. I never thought about this, but like all the seraphims, especially with Jinbei. Jinbei seraphim was just like doesn't know it never trained in a dojo with a cent in its life and apparently pulls out fishman jujutsu and karate right and you're telling me the lunarian blooded seraphims can't pull out magma and fire power so then that kind of does imply that king king's fire powers came from something else if it, if it pans out that they don't ever use that it's it's one of those things i'll be answered in sps we have no clue <laughs> it's it, it's up in the air right now I'm loving this like gag that you do. <laughs> I love the that. SBS gag. If we don't know it, just look at the next SBS. He's gonna answer it. I I'm yeah, throwing yeah. in my pen name out there. Mine is clones. I just love that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, find out I really like when Sanji tanks the attack and he says, "Do you understand what the power of love means?" Oh I think that's kind of dope. That is that is part of the theory. I didn't I didn't even get that at first, and it's like, oh, that just that's like a shout out to Sora. Like that's kind of cool. 
it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. It's a good line. I, I think they picked yeah. the best line for Sanji right here. Like, Sanji yeah. had the least amount of panels. Oh. And, of course, I'm, I'm a Sanji fan, right? Uh, I'm, I'm a huge yeah. fan of Sanji, Zoro, Luffy. Like, I hold them all on equal footing. But Sanji looked pretty good right here. I think, I think even, like, Sanji didn't need to show up. The greatest thing Oda did was to not put Sanji and S Snake in the same room. But I pray to God that never happens. I yeah, pray I, I to hope, God. I hope we leave this arc and Sanji doesn't even know S Snake exists. Yes. Like you know how please. like Sanji was going to Fishman Island and he was like, wait, Boa? Huh? The, the the pirate empress? Like he only sees her at the very end. I hope that's what happens here. Sanji yeah. only sees S Snake as they're leaving. Yeah, yeah. Like in, yeah. in no passing, not on the same ship, not in the same room. Just like from a far distance, he has to whip out the binoculars. Like he cannot see You hear see that, Oda? Her. You hear that? Like, <laughs> uh, thanks for the Sanji panels. A strong, strong handed suggestion there. Yeah. <laughs> please, please, no, a snake. So, <laughs> going on to the next group, floor four, building A. And we mm. have Luffy, Zoro, Sanji, and Kaku. Er, <laughs> Luffy, Zoro, Luchi, and Kaku. They're still fighting him. And it looks like. S Bear has teleported the Mihawk Seraphim out of the room. And it's pretty cool because we get a lot of things here. Uh, Zoro mentions that they just don't turn off the flames on their back. Like they're not using their speed boost. Which they're is not dumb like him. pretty smart. Yeah, why would you, right? You had two yeah. guys talk about how they're going to attack you when the flames are down. Well, let's not turn the flames off, right? Yeah. Leave the gas. And we're both off. gamers. We're both gamers. We've yeah. never turned off our passive. <laughs> don't turn off the passive why would you you're going yeah. minus bro <laughs> exactly you're, you're not you're not min it's not draining it's not draining mana apparently right like yeah how <laughs> so it's it's kind of cool to see it the mihawk seraphim is going after the weaker straw hats right now which i mean to be fair like that is a very valid strategy i don't know how well they'll do with that uh zoro and usopp go after s hawk and i have a feeling they're gonna get lost even though Usopp is going with them, I feel like they're both going to get lost. <laughs> yeah, I'm lost because, like, it does... No, Usopp has great sense of direction. You remember? Yeah. And he's lobby, this or, version of Usopp has really good sense of direction, but he's been in Water 7 for years, though. So it makes true. sense. But he was parkouring, bro. And the thing is about Kaku, I think he's a quick learner. I think Egghead is now his home. And uh, Giraffes have a... Uh, elevated sense of perception and so uh because they're tall not because their eyes are good their eyes could probably be garbage <laughs> i don't know but like <laughs> but the point is is like i pray i pray that this usa you know honestly if we're getting a call back to like any lobby in any regard right because like if atlas is taking robin or something like that then Usopp can play the same role that Usopp did in any lobby and be Zoro's sword. And so Kaku would be the best, especially now they can harden his nose, the best sword. Kaku could become one of Zoro's sword, 100%. Oh, he great. could. Yeah, they get handcuffed and then Zoro just swings Kaku around. Yeah. Well, oh, that'd be kind of broken because he would turn into his devil fruit and it'd be like a nose gun, right? It just yeah, extends. Yeah, exactly. And then Zoro would be like, be you gotta cool. let me know when you extend the... I don't want to finish. When you that extend sentence, your you... nose, yeah, yeah, yeah. The... I, you know, Zoro getting lost is interesting because it's like, is that just gonna extend or stall, or is Zoro? Because the thing is, when Zoro, so I pointed this out um, a long, long time ago. Um, this is related to my shadows theory. Actually, there was a a, a time that Zoro did not get lost. There's a, a, a singular time from memory. Um, I did more research back then, so I don't remember the full context. But when Zoro's shadow gets taken, he doesn't get lost. In Thriller Bark, he, he met up with everybody, stayed with everybody, even went to multiple parts of the castle without getting lost. He went directly there. And um, even the, like, the castle fell apart and he still came back, all while his shadow was gone. Not a single time. And it's funny because the anime... The anime added a scene where the shadow in the zombie, the zombie got lost. But Zoro didn't get lost a single time. And so, you know, like, uh, even in Onigashima, we saw Zoro getting lost many, many times. I don't know. I, I like I, I like the fast pacedness. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not often you get tired of Zoro's gags, but this is a time where it's like, ugh. Like, Zoro, well, I can place. see a scenario where the gag might actually work out in his favor. 
Oh, like he goes to the right place? Yeah. So I made a joke. Like, what if the gang goes so far that Zoro uh -huh. is the first person that makes it to York? Oh, you know what would be funny? Because then Us Usopp here, right? He'd yeah. be like, why are you going down there? Like, that. What? what is that? That's not a plate, blah, blah, blah. And Zoro just, like, keeps on running. And, like, because we know it's a sealed off place. And Zoro... I feel like Zoro ends up in places that are, like, sealed off. Like, yeah. I, I mean, he made it to, like, random alleyways in Water 7, right? Yeah. Like, Zoro just yeah. always gets lost. Like, it, it's it's gonna happen. Yeah, you, you know and, what? And here's you know, the thing, I, too. I see that. I, I like that. I like People that are like, oh, but Kaku is with him, right? Usopp 2.0 is with him. Zoro win won't get lost. We have to remember, Zoro and Wika got lost together. Like, the little Tontata. Zoro had yeah, the Tontata was... leading him in certain directions, and Zoro went the opposite direction. Like, having a guide does not matter. Like, I, I, I truly think these dudes are going to end up in two separate places, and it's going to be wild. Was she we good at guiding? The, the, the blue Tontata. What's up? No, no, I remember what she looks like, but was she good at guiding? Because I almost remember her being a ditz a little bit. She, she was a ditz, but she was good at guiding. Good at guiding. Zoro just okay. did not follow her directions. Yeah, and I feel like I remember her being like, how did we get lost so many times? I told you exactly where to go. I feel like I remember her like laying down and then yeah. Zoro's be like, it's all your fault. <laughs> like you're yeah. a horrible guide or something like that. I feel like that's what's going to happen here. Like imagine Zoro's the first one who runs into Kizaru and Saint Saturn just because he gets so lost. He like ends Yo. up on the outskirts of Egghead Island. I He's like, okay, how not, did I get here? I like that. I like how that a lot. I get Zoro? Here? Zoro ends up at the most important place, which yeah. is Kizaru, which I would love because that's running it back from Sabodi. Zoro has a oh, bone to pick yeah. with Kizaru. His Imagine Zoro time... ends up at like Laugh Tail right here. <laughs> that's Zoro gets, gets lost, lost and he's like, what is this? And then there's like pink mist everywhere. <laughs> hey, 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 don't sleep on that theory. Honestly, the Discord theory is crazy, but that last video, hey, 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 might be, hey, Zoro, might be in the right Zoro's direction. Gonna, he's going to get lost upwards is what we say. I would like it if when Zoro sees Kizaru, I, Ked, it's, Ked, Ked, it's canon now. Zoro gets lost, he confronts Kizaru. When he sees Kizaru, he, he grabs his neck, he's like, I remember you or something like that. Like, you know what I mean? He's just like, he, Ain't no way Zoro's gonna grab Kizaru's foot. neck. No, not good. He's he's gonna grab his own neck and like remember it's kind of like a, oh, a throwback oh. to that moment in Sabo because Kizaru had his like you know he had the foot on him you know like I don't want to shout out certain you know moments but actually Zoro my Zoro is a cop so you know moving on moving on moving on. So going on to the last portion here, we see that Luchi is saying, hey, Straw Hat, stop and think because Luffy's still going in on S Bear. And I always think it's kind of funny because Luchi is now in the law role, in my opinion. Yeah. He's he's playing the what what is it? Like the the, the friend that just gets drawn into all of Luffy's crazy shenanigans. And, and I kind of feel bad for Luchi at this point. It's like, yo. Like he he he's law 2.0 in my heart. Which is exactly the same sentiment we had with Law, because the moment he got the alliance, Usopp felt bad for him. He had Chopper tied to his head. He was, like, mortified. And he's like, what? what is happening? Yeah. And, like, the thing is, like, I get it. People aren't going to like this. I think there's going to be a lot of people who don't like it. And we talked about it in this light where I was like, they might even be friendly. It's One Piece. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, Luffy's literally a pirate. He doesn't care if people are in the black market or, or underworld or anything like that. Frankie literally beat up Usopp, and he's like homies like you build your ship <laughs> like, like cool afterwards right he saw frankie like once or twice he's like hey well like, you 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 beat up usopp i don't like you and then you know skip past in his lobby he's like hey you want to join my crew <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here's your panties you want to join my crew yeah and it's like you know makes it's interesting i mean frankie did a lot fair enough yeah right? he, he like, did a lot and yeah, i think yeah. luchi and kaku depending on how much they help out here like i don't think they're gonna join the fleet or anything but i feel like loopy has already seen them in a different light and depending yeah. on what they do after Egghead or during this arc, I feel like they could be friend material. Yeah. Pen pals. The thing is, it's like, yeah, like Luffy's literally a pirate. Like, it's like, this is... it's like what Mihawk said, right? Like Luffy's greatest ability is turning those around him into friends and allies. Like, yeah, we got it right here. Like this is Luffy's ability coming in clutch. Yeah, relegating Luchi to a little, like a little big brother kind of like a brotherly figure almost like yeah this is a line like you could substitute luchi's face here and just put law and it's like yeah it's the same makes thing. sense yeah i mean exactly. it, it's it's the joy boy effect right sun god nika yeah. brings a smile to everybody's face he brings yeah, them together 
Luchi witnessed Luchi... Gear 5th firsthand, and here he is. Could you imagine? Okay, 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 okay. What's up? Okay. Luffy, go back to that thing where it's like Sanji's, you know, doesn't see S Hawk and he's like leaving. Luchi, uh, Luffy's in the horizon sailing away, and then Luchi tips his hat and he just like puts a smile on, and then that's like, the end of the panel. Like, do you see that? Like, he's just like straw hat. Ain't Mugiwara. no way. I, okay. I love Luchi as much as the, as the next guy. I don't think he's going to look at Luffy and tip his hat and smile at him. No. I think Luchi will look at Straw Hat and just let him go one time. He's like, you know what? I, I let him get away. And then I'll, I'll, he, like, I'll get him next time and that's it. I don't think Luchi's going to look back at this with fond memories. What if it's even worse? Like he turns his back around like Kid or something. Like, you know, Kid is like yeah. low-key likes Luffy, but he has to act like an enemy in yeah. front of Luffy to keep that persona. Luchi might be like that. It might be Law and Kid combined in Luchi. And so when he turns around... <laughs> oh, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, Luchi is like Kid and Law combined in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like Kid is like apparently an awful person, so is Luchi. And then you know, like Luchi turns around, and then uh, he's just like, and then Kaku says something like, "You like that guy, don't you?" And then Luchi's like, "Ain't no way, hell no." That might be the the dynamic. Like Kaku's the one who who like actually pulls it out of Luchi, and then Luchi always denies it. Until I the mean, last Luchi saga. and Kaku, like, they're working together with Luffy and Zoro, but they're not super happy about it. Like, even Kaku's like, yo, well, like, what a pain in the ass, right? But Kaku's he's like... And buffing. Kaku, I, I, the thing I like about Kaku, he's just kind of like... He does... It's, it's like, it is a job, but it's also like... Yo, I'm chilling. You know what I mean? Like, he's just going around having fun. Every single... Like, even in Water 7, I remember, like, the way he was, like, running. He's just, like... He loves ships. That was his That was his dream job, too. And then here, he's just, like... You know, I forget the dialogue, but I just remember he's, like, joking around with Stussy. I feel like even with Zoro, when he, like, freaked out, and then, like, it was kind of, like... What's up, buddy? You remember me? I'm the direct... You know what I mean? That's, like, the kind of the vibe a little yeah. bit. Yeah. He really is Usopp. <laughs> so... Past the Loopy Luchi segment, we oh, have uh, the famous egghead incident, and we see Bonnie crying in a room. You know, hate to see Stop. it. Like, I, okay. what, what? What was I gonna say? No, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I was just. Being I, I would never make fun of Kuma. Okay, see? all right. Yeah, see, I would never make fun of Kuma. He, he, he's amazing. It. His backstory. Uh, whew, a few weeks ago, Sai's character development is great. I feel like I'm a good influence. I, I mean, I'm still not a fan of Kuma. <laughs> But, you know, I, I respect the backstory. If the backstory's sad enough, maybe he'll bump up in my ratings. Remember so. that comment in my stream that was, like, from Yuna? It was, or Juna. I, I still don't know how to pronounce it. I apologize. Where they were like, how can Sai look this in-depth but then still be pro-slavery? <laughs> it's not pro-slavery. It's anti-Kuma. All I gotta say. <laughs> I you like know, Kuma as much as the next guy, but he just hasn't shown out 100%. We don't know his backstory yet. I want to wait for that. It's like Dragon. I like Dragon, but we haven't seen anything of him. Once we see more of him, then you know what? The ratings will boost. It is It is what it is, right? Yeah, but but they're on the other side of the Marines. They're trying to take down the Marines and the world government. The Revs? What is but yeah, all Dragon can, like, even though I'm not a huge advocate for the revolutionaries, I can still like him. I could still tip my hat and smile all at right. them, right? In the horizon. Wait, this is a new side. I like this. All right, all right, fair enough. You know, okay, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a big, uh, I'm a big Akainu fan, but you know, I, I respect the Revs. I respect the Pirates. Yeah, we, this... I like people from all spectrums of the world. Damn, PC. There yeah, PC, PC Psy. PC Psy, that's so, crazy. We get, we get a little bit of backstory about the traitor. And it's really interesting when you think about everything in, in, in the grand scheme of things. And, and we'll, we'll get to that here in a second. So just to run down it, we have York, pretty much. Uh, we're, we're supposed to assume it's York. Doxing Vegapunk and telling the world government that he's investigating Poneglyphs in the Void Century. The government doesn't believe it right away. They send Cyberpol agents over there. And then they all go missing. So what they do next is they send CP0 and everybody else to assassinate Vegapunk because York called them a second time and revealed that, you know, there was some information dropped. And the Godosei, with 100% certainty, realized that Vegapunk indeed knows about the Poneglyphs and Void Century, so now they're sending pretty much a whole war his way. And we see uh -huh. a huge lineup of power, powerful, powerful, powerful characters. Saint Saturn, Kizaru, Dahl, Chinzo, uh, Brown Lightning, and Ray Chapo. 
all in the building. The Straw Hats won't stand a chance against these heavy hitters. But what Make they sure to expect, Google those names, guys. Make sure to Google those one very <laughs> hey, hey, don't, don't, don't fact check characters. It. Please don't fact check it. <laughs> but the narrator says what unexpectedly appeared was the ship of Emperor of the Sea, Straw Hat Luffy. Super cold line. With such an unforeseen development, the government steadily grew uneasy. In any case, the outcome of the incident the following day would give the entire world an unthinkable shock. Which, it's kind of funny because we see a panel of Akainu, another Godose member, and Gear 5th Luffy laughing mm -hmm. with Ya Ya Ya, which isn't typically how he laughs, but he's in Gear 5th, so he gets a pass for that one. And it's, it, it's really fascinating because mm. we know that the Marines were not expecting this, but the right. real question is, was the traitor, York, which we find out here in a second, was York expecting this as well? Because you got to remember, three months ago is a long time if York started this plan. Like, Luffy wasn't even in Wano yet. Like, if this happened during Wano, maybe York is like, okay, you know, Straw Hat Luffy's going to beat Kaido, awaken, and then get here. Hell, Vegapunk didn't even know that Luffy had the Sun God Fruit. He found that out in this chapter. He was like, wait, the Warrior of White is here. Like, I gotta see this with my own eyes. So he has no clue that Luffy had this fruit. So York expecting Luffy here as well, I don't think is super plausible. So I think the Straw Hats are definitely the wild card. And this could be why York's plan might fail in the end. Which, I mean, obvious because they're the main characters too. There's, the there's a lot writing for the Straw Hats. Yeah, yeah. They're the meddling kids. It makes a lot of sense. I have like four things. One of those things I just realized, but let's go to the things that are on the surface first. Yeah. First question. Do you, I, I just thought about this, but do you think that like, you know, the size of the bubbles where we got like the Kizaru and your fantasy uh, draft? Uh, <laughs> the fantasy draft? <laughs> You're talking about the goats, man. What are you talking about? Oh, fair enough. Do you think the size of the bubble indicate power or no, because like Saint Saturn has a slightly bigger one than Kazar, slightly like maybe like fourteen pixels wider. I okay. So with this narrator box, I actually think Saint Saturn's going to be a fighter, just because of the Ooh. way they make it sound. Right? They said war is looming on the horizon, and they Vegapunk sent would resist. Saint Saturn here. They said, yeah. The five elders anticipated retaliation. They expected Vegapunk to fight back, so they sent a Godosei member. So this implies that the Godosei member might be able to stop whatever retaliation is happening. Whether so, that's just to control the Seraphims, or maybe he himself is a fighter, it's still up in the air. But I'm starting to lean with maybe St. Saturn's kind of a boxer, right? That's maybe this old man lean. knows how to throw some fists. See, the, the sigh of last year was leaning towards geriatric center, senior citizen, Gorosei. Hey, it, and could now, still, it could still happen. He, he could still be a geriatrics man. Who, we have no clue. Does that line, because that, 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 I'm glad it, you pointed that out. There. You know, escorted by Admiral Kizaru. Like, is Sentamaru technically Kizaru's escort? And, like, the power diff is there, right? Like, yeah. is that, like, an escort? When you think about that, right, it's like, it's almost like when a... A world champion boxer has like uh bodyguards right but like you know it only makes sense with the if they're like lightweight or whatever and then the bodyguards are like much much bigger and weight like the heavyweight class right yeah but then if you have like Dwayne the Rock Johnson and like uh Maui and and like a bunch of people all in one do they need a bodyguard maybe not right but Kazaru is here giving him tea and crumpets right so it's like this yeah. guy could be incredibly strong and yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping he is because let's be real. We need final bad guys. We need someone for the Straw Hats to face off against when they're fighting Eam or however that goes down. The go to say being fighters, I feel like just works for the story. Right. Um, now, especially Chinzo on the side, the guy with like triple chins, quadruple, quintuple. Yeah, he's a he's a big fighter, too. Keep your eyes peeled Doll's for him. box is bigger than his. So, you know, to be fair, <laughs> uh, but uh. Oh man, I forgot the other things I wanted he to He kind of looks about. like Patrick Starr. A little bit. Patrick yeah, Starr does crazy. have uh, uh, Toon Force. He does have Toon Force. Um, <laughs> He's going to whip okay. out Gear 5th. I love sudden... the way they describe these events. They say, wait, uh, wait, how do they start? Like the gears started turning three months ago. The wheels of fate, right? 
and that's that's actually the fact that you said gears is what i said in the live thing i was like oh is this why it's called gears because like the wheels of fate so it's like the next gear like you know what i mean oh like heightening I, I didn't read the tcb scan i only read OP. oh wait so wait o op scans has gears and then yeah uh oh well, wheels so gears. i want to shout out op scans right here but last chapter all of the translations were closer to the viz than tcb mm. so i you know so shout then, outs to op scans wait so then my question is gear four and gear like all those gears are those words like synonymous in japanese with wheel because then that would explain why I gear, so gear the thing with wheel. gear is that whenever they do gear yeah i don't know how they do it in, in japanese I've, I've never seen like the raws for it like i've never like yeah. paid super attention but i guess Maybe that would be interesting katakana. to look at Maybe it's in katakana versus these are in kanji and the kanji is double meaning. Yeah. Or like meaning and then the context puts it in. So that's that's an interesting thing, you know. I, I do like the wording. The narrator box felt heavy. I think the narrator box was the first thing that made this chapter feel really cool. Because up until then, it was kind of like, I get it, I get it, I get it. Cool developments, cool, cool, cool. Interesting things, questionable things. But that narrator box was so heavy. That Nary Rocks was like flashbacks to, to Marine Ford. And to the point where, um, uh, I forget who chatted it. Chapter 524 is when we got the original version of that. And this one is way cooler. The most important thing that I want to bring up is so. you inserted something that wasn't said. Which In one? In the call to the Gorosei, it, you were saying York was the one who called them. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I read the full chapter and I was thinking the same thing. But then when we reread it, there was a huge theory that a lot of people liked. And it could be just in our faces. It says this is Egghead. Like, this is Egghead. Could it be that Wait, this what? is Punk Records? Wait, like, so when they're calling the, the person on the phone that's calling the Gorsai says, this is Egghead. Come in. This is Egghead. And it could be a location, right? Oh. Uh, that's not an uncommon thing to do, right? I, like, I don't see that in, in OP scans. Oh, what does OP scan say? It says, I'm speaking from Egghead Island. Oh. I'm calling from Egghead Island. Oh, then I have to see what Viz says then. Damn it. Because yeah. that's crazy. If it if it's, it's saying, like, this is Egghead, like the way TCB is saying, I'm like, that punk record theory that a lot of people liked, uh... That's kind of crazier now. That's kind of crazy. Hey, shout out so, OP scans. Yeah, I want to know now. Oh, damn. I need to see the raws. Damn. I thought that was going to be crazy. This is because I didn't register that. But if it's, it's, a, if it's a it's, translational it's interesting thing. When the translations come out, that's why like the viz is always like really important. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's yeah. like important to say like as near to the source as possible. Yeah, because we don't OP scans viz. We don't necessarily know. We, I mean, the thing with Japanese, it's it. it uh, you know, our tour and Hidden Island both have said this many, many times. It can be inferred in different ways. It's all about context. And the thing is, yeah. the reason why Viz is the Holy Grail is because Stephen Paul has access to Oda. So, like, if there's a context question, he's just like, hey, hey, buddy, <laughs> which what you, way, what, what you did you exactly here? mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whereas nobody else necessarily has that. That's um, the one thing, like, Viz has above everybody else. And they just recently started doing that too, right? What, the double checking with the Oda thing? Yeah. I don't know. I I just heard that that was uh, uh, the Stephen Paul went on a podcast and says that like yeah, sometimes he just has to call him. I don't know how far back that goes. I'm not an expert yeah. on that. Uh, some people tweeted at me about that a while ago, so maybe I'll ask them because they seem like regular listeners to that podcast, but not too sure. Vegapunk's eyes in that last page are so cursed. Just the way he's like looking at York, he's like absolutely shocked. <laughs> you see like his that's eyes bulging yeah, out yeah he's yeah. probably just looking at york's gun like bro that's bigger than my entire head oh my goodness i mean i'd be looking at a lot of things right those eyes uh you know they, there's york a lot is kind of adorable right, right yeah the, the face very last it's page. interesting because like when they show her emotions she has this adorable thing but then when she's like uh out and about or just doing something she doesn't like necessarily have this like no she always has this kind of adorable face you're right yeah so yeah. with york wanting to be a celestial dragon how do you feel about that it makes sense now um 
now that we get the context, I think that that reveal of that line felt really cool. But the last line was, or the last strip of it was really important, right? Honestly, yeah. the world really doesn't need more than one of us, right? And um, apparently, she has seen. I'm guessing through Vegapunk's memories, through Punk Records, she has seen the world government and and the. That's and, what and I'm Marijuana. assuming. And so Shaka is, you know, hates them. And yeah. she wants to and or wants to be a Celestial Dragon and it fits. I think like, you know, going back to this isn't this wasn't my primary thing. And I always shout out Mosh for it is uh, Mosh was basically saying like back like 1074, 1073, that like the greed thing is what was standing out to him. Greed doesn't necessarily mean glutton. And glutton was like, oh, like she's eating a lot. That's gluttony. That's greed, whatever. But like greed could mean that she wants to be the only Vegapunk. And he said that word for word. And, but like, like you said, nobody really expected the celestial dragon angle where she's so greedy and so like removed from like, like any humanity that she's like, yep, celestial dragons, that's me. That's what I want to be when I grow up. Right. And the reason why that's crazy is because what Vegapunk told us about the satellites, he said that they are clones of sections of his personalities and so logic is his logic greed is his greed so he wanted to be a celestial deep down at yeah. least one percent of him wanted to be a celestial dragon he looked at it and he said wow i want to live in a bubble yeah i mean as far as york i think there's like one person in history that i could find with the name york because i did look it up after we got the reveal uh -huh. I, I, I went to google and i typed in york person and there was a york who was a american explorer but obviously, like, I don't know if that's what Oda wants to reference, but it is, it is yeah. kind of interesting. I also would want to look at the katakana or like the Japanese uh, or someone in the chat. I have Ryro's listening. York, you know, with the R, could it be yolk? And then it's just like egg yolk. Like, is that like that'd be kind of funny. Was? Somebody and did point just... out that during the Egghead Island trailer, 06 was one of the main numbers displayed underneath Egghead and York is 06. So that's like a potential mm. hint. There's mm. a lot of hints that could have led us here, which is kind of yeah. crazy. But then again, Oda yeah. dropped like potential hints for a lot of characters though. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think again, right now, like from this chapter, the progression right before the reveal, we, we paused on the stream and it's like, with this chapter, you can do a process of elimination, right? Shaka's dead. Stella's down. Lilith is frozen. Edison is in Nami's arms, unless that's and not the case. There was actually still people who believed it was Shaka. And, and you know what? Like More like an Ultron. You know, like in uh, how an Ultron, Ultron like rips through his old body into a new one. Yeah. Like what yeah, if yeah, Shaka yeah. did that? Like he's like, oh, I don't need that body anymore. And then he just you know comes down like a better version of Shaka. That'd be kind of cool. You know what? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna give I'm gonna see the thing is when when I said like Atlas on my thing, a lot of people are like how can you how can you be coping so hard when it's right in front of you? I'm like that's not what I'm doing. Like I'm acknowledging that this is right in our face, but I'm not gonna ignore other things that have been built up up until this point. It we didn't even have her explain anything. You know what I mean? We yeah. just have her sitting our squat and like a Vietnamese dad in front of us, and then like and and we're just like yep she did the it. Japanese like, smoker huh, position. How? It's kind of cool. <laughs> how did she do it See, why I, did she do i still it? think it's stuff, just right? york especially with what she says at the end saying like the but world would be better the, off with only one of us here's the thing the the hologram thing could play in with the shaka thing you acknowledge it too that cannon that she's holding would not do the damage that it would do to shaka what if that shaka thing is all a ruse because is it oda <laughs> to have look like literally show us the size of the gun Right at right after seeing the bullet hole in Shaka said, Shaka's not a giant. Shaka's a normal sized dude. That cannon is not doing that damage to Shaka. Shaka's right. entire torso we, we is gone. We cannot gauge One Piece based off proportions. <laughs> all I'm saying, all I'm saying is if people want to go the Shaka route, I'm saying they that's probably what logic they should use. They should definitely look at this and be like, huh. I don't know if it makes sense panel panel right next to each other. We see the size difference. Um, and then on top of that, Oda actually, I don't know. No, we did have a panel with uh, 
um, Stella and Shaka next to each other. But in this chapter, it was very apparent. They were staying next to each other. And uh, Stella is actually taller than uh, Shaka. And I thought Shaka would be taller. But um, so we get a size reference. Shaka's right like a normal person, whereas York is a low key giant. Yeah, exactly. So this canon, I don't know. I'm just saying yeah. that if you were, if you were, I'm not on the boat that it's Shaka. I'm on the boat that it's Atlas. That's where I'm at. I, um, I, I think it's solely York. I'm I on can the York see, train. I, I, I'm on the York, I'm on the, I'm on the, um, what's it called? I'm, I'm paragliding over the York train, ready to jump onto the Atlas train. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. I'm shooting down every point I see in my way. The re, you know, I mean, there's. There's Wait, so up? many reasons for Alice. I mean, we talked about a lot of them on the stream, but it's like the fact that she said in her introduction, I'm a I'm a Vegapunk genius for hire. And then right before that, she's complaining about all of the things that they can't do because they don't have the funding. They don't have the money. And it's like, huh? And she said, it makes me so mad. They can't make food. They can't fix the weather. They can't do all of these things. All of which would impl like, and we talked about it uh, on the on the stream too. That could mean that that Alice wasn't actually Alice, and that was York. It could be both ways. I'm looking at both of them with like eagle eyes, not even hawk eyes above that eagle eyes because. I don't know. The, the there's thing, no the reason to introduce too, disguises and holograms, and you're not going to use that. I feel like that's going to be something here. It's it's like, since these all stem from a singular person, every Vegapunk could feel that way. Like, even the Stella body could feel like, oh, we don't have enough funding, we don't have enough people, I'm a scientist for hire because he literally is, because he works for the world government. They can all feel that way, but since Wrath is Wrath, I feel like she's just angry about it. Whereas since Yorick is Desire, she actually desires it. Lilith was evil, so Lilith wanted to mm -hmm. plunder the Straw Hats for the money. Mm -hmm. So the, I feel like based on what they are, they go about it a different way. They all want a certain thing. They all feel the same way. They just go about obtaining it differently. Like York is desire. So she a she's actually going to like go the extra mile to become a celestial and get rid yeah. of the other Vegapunks. Yeah, no, I definitely I definitely like the York thing. I think again, this is what I said on the stream. I said next chapter there has to be a bathroom uh a bathroom because, camera thing because that is not a bathroom camera necessarily but when we get like york's we're gonna get it where it's like this is how york did these things right um regardless of who it is but yeah. if it's york right we're gonna see like when the dome went down boom when when you know the cypher pole ate how she brought them up right all of those things we're gonna see a lot of those things and um the important part of it when we look back at it was the moment of time the there's two things actually the two the two things being that the reason why i like york over atlas is because unlike atlas york actually is like a blind spot in in the system because when we're talking about uploading to punk records york truthfully is the best satellite to 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 hide from the punk record upload because she's only there to eat poop and sleep if you did not get an update of that you wouldn't really bat an eyelash she could not yeah. update and they'd be like oh she's eat pooping and sleeping if she weren't i'd be hungry right that's essentially what you'd get and um so it like she could be the person who's not uploading i like that that's why i like her over york the second part of it is in order for her to go under a blind eye, right? The, there's a part that helps and the part that hurts. The part that helps is there's a, in her system, she goes to the bathroom and she's there. We don't know how long. And we talked about why that's significant on the thing, but it's like, it's, do they have cameras in there? Are they monitoring that? Are they monitoring all of the stuff or are they just ignoring that? Is that when she's calling the Gorosei? Is that when she's implementing her plan? Um, even from like that standpoint where her life is relegated to eat, poop, and sleep. If I was a mega genius, I would be upset. That motive makes complete sense, right? Um, the only part of it that kind of, I'm not saying it hurts it, but you pointed out when the frontier dome, uh, went down, she's like in her chubby form. And then when it comes back up, we see that she's in her skinny form sometime later. I didn't, uh, track down the panel yet, but, um, the important thing that people were saying was like, wait, 
why is she sleeping? It's supposed to be eat, poop, and sleep. So she ate, she pooped, she didn't sleep though. So that sleep part missing might imply that, hey, maybe there's something funny happening here. Maybe while she was in the bathroom, that's the perfect time to swap her out with something, swap her out with a hologram, swap her out with something else, right? And the important part about that is that's literally like the bread and butter of Detective Conan, which so a lot of people aren't like familiar with it within the community, but the people who are definitely know why that's significant. Cause like nine times out of 10, you get a situation like this where someone's being framed because they have a disguise. They're just, they're just beat up and tied up in a bathroom star. It's like literally in every movie, literally in every like plot driven episode. That's like the main thing. That's the person that's supposed to be there is tied up. And you're like, wait a second. You're not really who you're supposed to be. And it's like a Scooby-Doo type of thing too. But like, I think Scooby-Doo did that a few times too, where like the person that they were masquerading as ended up being tied up in the closet or something like that. Right. Um, it's like common. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and I, I still just go back to the part where yeah. it's just like Atlas saying that to disguise. But like you said, all of the Vegapunks could be uh, utilizing that. Atlas saying that might show that Atlas isn't the person. I just look at the dialogue that Atlas said in the introduction that pushed it over. But I like your response. The the wrath thing, it fits there, right? And York would truly be the person that comes, uh, pushes it over. I do like all that. With this reveal, though, and that, you know, she's saying that she wants to become a celestial dragon. She's going to be one. How does she get there? How like, is she going to become that? Like, like, how do you think she's going to obtain that? Because as it stands right now, mm -hmm. she leaked information to the world government. They sent yeah. cyberpol agents, but what she did was she captured them. They gave them no information. She captured them. And then she called them again with concrete information to spark a war. Like she knows what she yeah. was doing. She captured these guys and she wants this war. So now we have Saint Saturn, Kizaru, and you know, these really strong members of the Navy showing up. And it's like, she's not on their side necessarily. Like, CP0 came here to kill her. The Navy wants to kill all the Vegapunks. How does she pull away from this as a Celestial? She holds St. J. Garcia hostage. But Make if she me a does, Gorsa though, then it's Celest like, would they want her yeah, as a Celestial? I like, that's the hard part. Like, I thought about it. It's like, okay, she could hold J. Garcia as a hostage. But what happens then she lets go of them and then they're gonna go along their day and just live right beside her like that doesn't really happen like yeah. if some dude walked up to you like held you hostage and said i want to live next door to you like would you be like oh yeah sure why not you know just drop the gun and we're cool like yeah. no like I mean, you wouldn't be work. okay with that that didn't work for doflamingo so i don't know why that would work for her right? yeah because that's like, essentially what dofi did he brought his it, severed celestial dragon dad's head and it's like bring me back there, there's like, gotta no. be something here and then you know we talked about maybe she'll get robin and turn them into the world government but even yeah. then like that's not a deal that cp0 had even like if cp0 captured robin it wouldn't be like oh like we're gonna get a crazy promotion and be celestials like not even they got that crazy of a deal maybe she'll turn in vegapunk along with cypherpole yeah that that'd be cool but like would they look at york as a savior probably not because they were coming here to kill these guys anyways like, I'm, th there's not you... a lot of scenarios that pull out the w for york and obviously this is supposed to be the world's smartest person in one piece so maybe there is some big brain strategy here maybe everything is going according to plan but i just i just don't know how i mean she doesn't have a spanish name so that's one reason she's ostracized but uh <laughs> the other thing is I, I was surprised. I thought you were going to mention what you did at the end of my stream that took a lot of people back. They're like, whoa. She's going to marry uh, Saturn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, I don't know. She's going to marry weird. into the Celestial Dragon name. She's going to be Miss Saturn. Like, I want to be a Celestial Dragon. And like, you know, we don't have the reasoning. We don't have the reasoning why. But we do have, I think, minimum one, minimum one, of King Steli, Goa Kingdom, implying that there is a way to ascend to Celestial Dragon status. Yeah. He has Garp, and he was, like, almost skirting it when he got to the Empty Throne. I I don't know. I don't know, because, like, it's like, did Vegapunk have this offer? Did he Was he offered a Celestial Dragon role, and he 
turned it down? Is that how York knows that know. this is an option? And then like, even weird. then, she knows a part of the Void Century. Like, she was, you know, she's part of the people they want to eliminate. So just her having knowledge in the first place, it's like, I, I feel like they'd rather kill her than make her a Celestial. Maybe there is a way, maybe you just donate enough money, but then why would the royal blood want to mix with the lower blood? Like, I can't see them saying, oh, you gave me, like, a billion berries. Sure, why not? Because they have a lot of money. Yeah. Like, they wouldn't really care about donations. Yeah, they're already getting heavenly tribute. It makes yeah, no so sense. Yeah, so, like, why, why would they care? It makes more sense to keep them on the payroll than, than to yeah. get the lump. It's, uh, lump it's, sum it's, it's a good, weird though. one. I mean, I like where this is going because this really shows that we're in the final saga. Mm -hmm. Like, everything is becoming more and more world government focused. Like, what well, we have Kuma climbing oh, yeah. Marijua, the Revs are finally on the move, and then now we have the Celestial Dragons coming back into play. It's like, everything's moving forward. And I, I like the reveal. Um, It's just, you know, like I said, it's it's just how are we going to get there, though? Like, what is what is the grand yeah. plan? I didn't think... I Honestly, when you got the thing, I want to be a Celestial Dragon... I didn't even like think about it like that. Like how how does she become that? Because when you look at all the factors here, nothing, nothing. Honestly, nothing besides your marriage idea. Kind of like yeah. I mean, marrying into it would make sense. But like, like somehow the war that's coming. Right, we have Saturn, Kizaru, a hundred battleships. All of this is theoretically like, according to her plan. Yeah. Like she wanted this outcome. Like how does she walk away with W? We have no how clue. Does yeah, like, does, does like, St. Jane Garcia just, like, give her, like, the purple ribbon or something? Like, you know, yeah. like some honorific Like, I, I just thing? can't imagine it. Like, if they're here to kill every Vegapunk, if they sent CP0 to kill every Vegapunk, there's no way they're going to listen to York, right? There's no way they're just going to spare her. What is she going to do? And Say, then, hey, look, I, I have Vegapunk right here. Well, it doesn't matter. They were going to kill him anyways. Like, they, can't, they, they sent Kizaru here to end this man's life. It, this it, chain of events is going to culminate tomorrow, and the outcome will shock the world. And Someone by tomorrow, said, um, they mean like 500 chapters. Yeah, honestly, I was going to ask you, do you think that tomorrow, like, Oda just no, goes dude, somewhere else? Like, I think like somebody, he goes to Shank and Kid? Bro, somebody literally popped up, which, I mean, I don't I don't fault them, right? It's, it's innocence, but they were like, oh, next chapter, Egghead Island's going to be over. It's like, bro, no way. Somebody yeah. actually said that. They were like, oh, like, next chapter, we're going to see the end of Egghead Island. It's like... <laughs> No, no, it is I mean, just starting. Is... We're going to be here for a minute. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I already it, feel it. the narrator box was double, I think double or if not triple the one that we got that was parallel to this chapter 524 uh, prior to Marineford. Yeah. Like, like, that was chapter 524. When did Marineford end? Like 586-ish? 584 or something like that? That's 60 chapters. And if this is, this is like tomorrow right and this is egghead like are we gonna get like 40 more chapters of this like that's kind of scary i mean i'd be i'd be down for it and here's the thing too so we have the, the dialogue we have the narrator box what's up do you think the community will be down probably 30 more chapters of egghead 30 more chapters of egghead but it's a war yeah okay. I, I think All people right. would like it let us know in the comments. Like we're gonna we're gonna get like some crazy matchups right we're gonna have zor versus chinzo like will he beat the guy with multiple chins who knows Chinzo, we have uh, Sanji versus the guy with a black beard and a white stripe. Like you know, Sanji, he might lose that battle. Who knows? And Doll and versus Luffy, Nami. Doll taking it. Luffy versus Saint J Garcia. No, no, finally... no, no. Luffy versus uh, Ray Chopper, the guy with the glasses. Oh my goodness! But I was gonna say because then it would be like the parallel and shonen thing of Luffy getting a taste of the upper echelon of power now. Yeah. Right. Every single time he faced the Admirals, realized he was too low. He faced Yonkos. Kaido did it himself. Right. We, fought kaido and then a hundred chapters later he fights kaido again and it's like kaido gave him that taste big mom gave him the taste um the taste is not good and so maybe luffy gets a taste of saint jay uh before york does and um and uh yeah the, honestly so during the narrator box crazy. saying that like war is on the horizon mm -hmm. and we know that the straw hat grand fleet's supposed to be in some sort of big war do you think this might be it I want any <laughs> any straw hat Grand Fleet, bro. Like, why didn't they show up when Luffy was literally dead? Like, come on, in Onigashima. Hey, the Vivir card told them otherwise. The Vivir card was was shining bright. 
imagine they showed us that that'd be crazy but like when you think about it all those theories that people are saying oh the grand fleet's gonna come because the vivir card's gonna go down and then luffy actually ended up like basically on death's door and then they didn't even like show them and the vivir card thing exists and the whole dialogue was like <coughs> was um if it starts we'll do burning, our own we'll thing up. <laughs> yeah and then it didn't happen hey, wano like, was far away Th that happened in the span of a night though let's be real they couldn't show it, but like they could have acknowledged it, like yeah. the freak out, right? Just like like a cover page where they're all like <laughs> reacting to the Vivri card. Yeah. But here's and the thing with this is that Morgan's wants to post a paper talking about how Luffy's declared war on the government and he's kidnapping Vegapunk, and he even tells the location too. He's like, "Oh, it's Egghead Island." So. And how f this is tomorrow? How fast are they gonna come? Hey, they can't hey, come don't, by tomorrow. Don't underestimate Big <laughs> News, Morgan's. No, 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 no. The, the press, the press is there, but then the the people have to pull out their reading glasses because most people are illiterate in the story, and then they have to sail their way to Egghead. Okay, okay. Here, here. How, how do they this? even how get this? to Egghead? What if the Vivir card was burning during Wano, and they all already left to head towards that direction? So, getting the newspaper about Egghead, they're like right around the corner because they were already heading to Wano. Okay, okay. Except for Barto, right? Because except for yeah, everybody shows up except for Barto. Because we so know we know that something slow. went down with that. No, but like this was weeks later. Like how many? Because like Luffy was about to die. Onigashima ends weeks, weeks, weeks. Then they sail to Egghead. That means they're like the slowest, like Avengers ever. <laughs> like they, they, we saw you were about to die four weeks ago. We're here though. We made it. <laughs> they 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 stayed around the area. They saw the Vivi card come back, and they're like, you know what? Let's not go to Wano. Let's let's stay at some uh, some random islands around here, though, just in case. Yeah. So so Sphinx Island apparently is nearby or close, or like they're they're on Winners Island. The Grand Fleet is with Law. Oh, that actually not be an awful thing. That's how Law makes it out. Like the Grand Fleet is there, which they would be friendly the with. The Grand Law. Fleet would get whooped by Blackbeard. The entire Grand Fleet, though. Yeah, dude. What are you talking? Okay, that's like saying Luffy's gonna lose against. Whitebeard allies. That's like saying Shanks gets taken out by Buggy's, you know, okay, minions no, 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 from from uh, Intel Shanks. down. Okay, no, no, no. Blackbeard versus the entire Grand Fleet and Law and his crew. The, well, the Law... it, it kind of looks like Law's already been dealt with, right? Like I, 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 well, I see a lot know. of people. We, uh, it, it's they... it's so interesting because like, I, I don't think the Law fight, at least in my opinion, I don't I don't consider that an off-screen fight. Oh, you think that it, it, like the ending was? But so then, so then I think the, the ending's conclusive. Like the reaction what's... he had when Blackbeard absorbed his awakening. Like I, I feel mm. like we can all see what's going to happen there. But you don't think he's dead? No, no, I don't think Law's dead. So th that's he, he's, where he's the too much of a fan is. favorite character to like actually if, die, in my opinion. If Law is not dead, then what does? How does Blackbeard leave the situation without killing him, without taking his fruit? Does he just send him to Impel Down? Which fair, I made a video about. Like it doesn't make any sense, but. It, like the question is like what's the in between of like what would like in Boa's situation no one thought really necessarily right like that was a surprise yeah. and then once we got the reveal that Shaki was an empress or whatever it's like oh that all makes sense right if the grand fleet was on its way to see luffy and they just like hopped onto winter's island and there was like chilling nearby they know law because dressrosa was with law yeah that's not an awful idea into like hey maybe it's that would at least deter idea. blackbeard from like continuing everything right um, but i i don't know black I, I should be able to wipe them you're right Harudin, i don't think like uh what is it ideo blue gilly like yeah but i, I don't Cy look at these and dudes cavendish Cy and cavendish they they could they, they i, they I don't the see ass. these dudes whipping blackbeard and his crew though like like cavendish that's kind of where i'm defended. at like yeah sure it, it'll make things better for law and he might get out of it in a better shape than i think he is but you know what i just realized we should just throw know. all the characters we need to just delete and just put them all at Blackbeard so you just get rid of them. <laughs> like the Grand yeah, Fleet, are just, they necessary? He, he's point? owed as a racer. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I wouldn't be like if I'm I'm okay with that because they didn't show up to Onigashima. But it's fine, like yeah. you said, like it was the span of ten hours. They couldn't possibly have showed up. Um, them not acknowledging is interesting. The Grand Fleet coming here, I think it follows the same thing as as Onigashima, because the thing is it's like, is Unless Saint Saturn is the guy, and Kazaru could maybe bring Luffy to a brink of death, but I don't even think a lot of people agree with that, right? After Kaido's fight, it's like, yeah, he's not able to fight Kaido, but is Luffy gonna get like 
destroyed by Kizaru while not. Zoro's there, right? Like, that doesn't make sense. Like, I, I think the number of battleships matters too, because there's a hundred battleships, right? All sizes. We got, we got what, 50 ships from the, the Santa Maria fleet? Or Lumbus about to pull up, bro? All right. So, but then, but then the same thing that you said about Blackbeard, Blackbeard would whoop this, the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. Wouldn't Luffy whoop the random Marine ships? Right? He like, would, but it'd be better if Luffy just focuses on Kizaru at, or Saint Saturn. At this point, Sai, I'm at the point where the ships are a non-factor because of all the pacifist Takumas. They have the ultimate defense shield and these ships, good luck. Good luck coming on to, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. sure, your seven chin dude maybe takes a single one, but 50? They're, they don't have, they don't have 50, cause, like, Kazaro's gonna what have if, to what solo if they all have, of them. Uh, what if they have the control chip and Saint Saturn just controls them? Because of his authority. Okay, if the pacifistas have the authority chip, which, you know, wasn't necessarily explicitly said because it was all only said with the Seraphim, but it would make sense that they do. Um, then, then I would the battle would turn though, against the Straw Hats, and then they would need the Grand Fleet. I would, and wonder... then Ideo would show out. Like we have, uh, we have him just show up, start boxing the the pacifistas. Have we like, ever seen the admirals command the pacifistas, whether it's Saba, Odi, or Marineford? Because that's important. Because we've only seen Sentamaru ever command the pacifistas, and I wonder if that's like a him type of thing. Um, but it could be a him type of thing, but that could just be the control hierarchy at play. Yeah, and like, I would imagine the admirals yeah. would be above or or out. But the thing is, would the because we got the what what uh people with the authority chip, which would be like Kobe level people. Yeah. Right? Then it was Vegapunk, and no, then it was Sentamaru, then it was Vegapunk. So Sentamaru is put above even cp zero right yeah even yeah. cp zero so would the admirals be put above centamaro i guess so right but the cp zero is technically technically like it's weird because it's it's a movie thing but they're also kind of like above admirals since they work directly with the gorosei directly with the celestial dragon even in in the the 1055 1054 a kind of was like we can't even investigate because the god knights it's their jur jurisdiction right we do yeah. know that there's hierarchies above the admirals uh within the world government it's and like when do flamingo kills or tries to kill gecko moria and gecko's like oh who's doing this who ordered you to do this was it sengoku and he's like nope <laughs> higher up yeah so it's yeah. like oh and then like, could be anybody. and then who does he report to he reports to his, like a cypher poll agent yeah right? he reports like, to cp zero yeah, so like, it's interesting. It, it makes you wonder, uh, wh like, uh, in terms of the chessboard. But e even where the then, chess like, we don't are. need Kizaru to give the orders. Honestly, Saint Saturn has authority even over Vegapunk. So if true, she just controls true, true, the Seraphims, true. then it's it's GG. Controls. Not, I mean, the not pacifism. like GG, but he's you not, know, just like he's, he can't make it straight to the there, right? Unless he's that broken. Right? I mean, like, if you crazy. really think about it, I don't think anybody's gonna get here. It's been like what, like 10, 12 chapters? Like nobody's here yet. <laughs> Honestly, we might end the story. These guys are still on their way to Egghead. Yo, that's mad funny because you were just saying like, oh, the Grand Fleet on their way. And then meanwhile, you were just acknowledging like, well, hey, they're currently on the I'm slowest ship in, in the verse. It, it, like, it's, it's a possibility, right? I feel like anything is possible for Egghead. So who knows? Maybe Kizaru never makes it here. Maybe Luffy makes it a laugh tale and we get One Piece 2.0 and then Kizaru finally gets to Egghead and then everything's already done. The best part is this also exemplifies the horrible planning of the world government because they said, however, the five elders anticipated that Vegapunk would resist. So they sent one of their own escorted by Admiral Kazaru, right? Uh, and they're reinforcing it, right? Which means that they were like, huh, CB0 probably can't take it all on their own, right? They're yeah. supposed to execute uh, Vegapunk, but because of the retaliation, we need to send backup. How late is this backup? By the time the backup would have shown up, yeah, CP0 no, this, this backup been... is late. Like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy to think about that. Yeah, like they they planned this out. They sat in a room and said, "Yo, this is the best strategy." CP Zero goes in, and then right behind him, they have Kizaru. Bro, CP Zero has been here for chapters. They've been yeah, here maybe. for straight chapters now, and Kizaru is. I mean, they, he's on his they way. They were put to sleep. Bro, we, we got like the outside shot of Egghead. We see some waters and, and we see the coast. We see no ships. Like, I think at least put like one ship on the side to like let us know that they're almost there. But these guys are far. Even G14, where Dahl is coming from, is supposed to be super close by. 
No, literally, you're right. No, literally, you're when right. CP0 was being turned away, Vegapunk was say he's, he was like, "Hey, uh, G14 is nearby. If, if you know, if you're cold, grab some tea there, Kaku." And it's like, how close is it? Like miles, planets, <laughs> solar systems? Like no, they're still not here. The dull point. You're right, 100. percent They're right next door. It, it's, it's a like, good meme. They see the fire and they're like, "Yeah." cool <laughs> like we'll wait for kazaru <laughs> like you know what i mean it's crazy oh that's that's so real distance Here's... in one piece is funny yeah yeah i time i think i think a thematic that oda's playing with and this is a part where it's not this is a part where it could leave a sour taste because timeline can play beneficial it's like oh it's just this is the timeline right but like if he fumbles the timeline of things it does feel awkward like like in this situation in hindsight it's like they have the slowest ships <sighs> man I, here's here's a question i have what's I have, up um i think i think this we were talking about luchi being buddy buddy with luffy right to a certain extent yeah obviously though he'd still be cp0 by the end of it right I feel like I feel like he's still gonna be CP zero. What about Stussy? Does Stussy get ratted out? Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Stussy. I mean, huh. Stussy even showed intent of leaving with Vegapunk. Like she never that... really said she wanted to go back to CP zero. But do you see a world where like Luchi ends up realizing and like teaming up with? No, I don't see that anymore. Like I talked about that earlier, but it, even in this context of them teaming up, I don't see them like turning a blind eye to Stussy. Like, no way not... yeah i mean even if even she's... if luchi turns a blind eye to stussy and doesn't tell the go to say about her being a traitor like why would she go back like she doesn't care wait real quick they don't know that stussy is like a vega punk because all for all they know luchi and kaku were put to sleep she doesn't answer did she answer luchi and say like oh like i'm a mads clone or like i'm no. She didn't say any of that. Luchi, for all he put to sleep, and then he wakes up, there's Seraphim's at him. He has no real context of Stussy when you kind of think about it. But even then, I feel like yeah, yeah, adding yeah. no I context is even worse. So yeah, I, I don't <laughs> think there's a world where Luchi turns a blind eye to Stussy. Yeah, I was I feel like Will I like he work with her to get out of this island? Yeah, that, that's that's a good possibility because he's working with Luffy to get off the island. But and Luchi Will and Luchi Kaku's... turn a blind eye and let Stussy have her job after this? Nah. Nah. Is there a way, a reason that uh, at the moment, this is something we talked about a long time ago, was at any level that the world government forsakes uh, Luchi and Kaku? I I think so. Is I, I is... think right now, actually, I don't know. I At first, I thought they did forsake them because the mm -hmm. Seraphims were attacking them. But now that we know it's all York, I think the world government will not forsake them okay yeah that's an interesting one because i'm like huh i, I actually wonder. think luchi and kaku's report of egghead island will be really impactful for the go and how they act in the future Ooh, and how they interpret right. york in general and vegapunk even so i I, th I think they do still have their jobs retained by the end of this arc so this is my last my last thing because uh, i'm probably gonna talk about this later but the narrator box, um, you know, it says shock the world, right? What yeah. did it, in 524, it said what? It said, um, at the very end, it says, all the forces of justice, only six days, blah, blah, blah. All the forces of justice were beginning to gather at the headquarters. The seven warlords, all blah, blah, blah. And one thing they all understood is that no way they could ever fight a long side one another very interesting i feel like there's another dialogue box there was but, another um, one when ace was beaten by blackbeard and yes. they said the events of bonero island will culminate to a bigger event at a later date or something like that well do you know the exact wording at the end of it did they say like a tragedy i don't think it said like tragedy the world that, i think it uh, said event because they didn't want to like hint at ace's death yet but so then so so that's chapter four 441 i believe then um after that so 441 is the end of it let's see um yep the duel at bonero island in the grand line this battle between pirates would later be identified as the trigger for the major events that were to follow end of end of thing so it's kind of vague there and we know what the major events were marine yeah it was marine where and it was Luffy also suffered... the death of Ace. 
Luffy suffered a major tragedy in Ace. How does that parallel here? What is the, does the shock, is it personal or is it shock to think? Because the last thing I was going to say is like, it almost feels like, yeah, like the Straw Hats aren't necessarily going to fail, but the Gorus are going to get what they want. I they, think the, the Marines wanted Ace dead. That's what they yeah. got. Um, you know, the Gorus say they're coming here. I think they're going to get what they want. I, I think the Gorus say will get what they want because the way I see this is that Luffy has no reason to go to Marie Joan to fight the Gorus. He has no reason to fight Eam. He just wants to be Pirate King. Yeah. Currently, they're not he really even know standing. About the yeah, he, they're not really standing in his way. Yeah. Like he doesn't look at you know the, the go to say and say, oh, I need to beat these guys to be Pirate King. You know, I gotta take down Eam and overthrow the world government. Luffy doesn't care about that. He just wants he to find the one knows, piece. He barely knows about CP Zero. I yeah. Think, didn't he say like, oh, you guys are in white suits now? Or something yeah. Like, that, like right? Luffy was confused when he saw them. I feel like whatever happens on this island, I feel like the go to say need to show out well and pull out some w to where luffy's focus while still on the one piece he adds in an extra goal of okay i need to go to marie joie and get this or whatever i need to beat these people and then find the one piece like i feel like at some point we'll have to add in this detour and so far narratively luffy has no reason to minus the connection to joy boy and the void century which still he doesn't really care about so there's something something that has to happen here that makes Luffy care just a little bit. Yeah. So I don't really know what that is yet, whether it's York becoming a celestial and he wants to get revenge, whether it's the Godase saying they have the fourth road Poneglyph, we don't really know what is going to happen. I, I don't know. There, there's yeah. a lot here, and I'm really excited to see how this unfolds. Hopefully we don't have to wait like 100 chapters. Actually, you know what? Hopefully we do. Because that means One Piece yeah. is going to go on for a long, long time. Yeah, we get to talk more. Yeah. I, I, for me... I think, but not the bias. Uh, history almost makes this harder to understand because now we know we saw the Bonnaroo thing, we saw the Marine Ford one. We know what events precipitated from those things, right? The the Ace uh, Blackbeard fight was much smaller in narrator box. This one almost parallels the the Marine Ford one a little bit more, or the pre Marine Ford one, um, and. If you were to conflate the two, it's like, it almost feels like it would have to be with the Straw Hats, right? But like, the one on um, Bonnaroo Island, right? This battle between pirates would later be identified as the trigger for the major events that were to follow, right? The trigger to major... This chain of events is going to culminate tomorrow and the outcome will shock the world. It's, it's kind of... Though the narrator box feels the same, it's it's saying a completely different thing. And I'm almost expecting, like, Vegapunk is dead. That's what the Gorosei want. That's what they wanted from the very beginning. Very simple. Vegapunk is dead. The news that gets put out is Vegapunk wanted to just... He was, he was con trying to conspire to destroy the world, just like Ohara. That's the shock to the world. The guy that everybody loved around the world is a guy who is researching into the ancient weapons, whatever they want to say. Yeah. And that's all that's so necessary to shock the world. You it's think super... that Vegapunk is going to die? Yeah. Is, almost, is that where you're at? I almost think that the our recycle cur idea could even play <laughs> out, right? Like that, like, I, yeah. he, he's, I think Vegapunk is going to die. I don't know if York gets what they want. I think all of that is in between any way that spins out. But I think at the minimum, the Gorsei get what they want. I think that makes sense. The Gorsei, like you said, uh, it, it almost wouldn't make sense for them to get an L, right? Like, we talked yeah. about that in, in the past. They want Vegapunk dead. Vegapunk will die. What happens in between that and Luffy Luffy situation? It's, it's sky's the limit, essentially, right? Like, Luffy isn't necessarily... The only reason why it's an L is, like, what you said before. He said he would protect Vegapunk. If Vegapunk gets, like, killed in front of his eyes, he's going to look at that as a failure, right? Yeah. Um, I don't, it's not a necessarily a personal tie yet, but like, then we have the Bonnie stuff. We have the Kuma stuff. There's so many it's, other it's things. So many moving parts. I, yeah. if I had to throw my coin out there just to end off this video, I yeah. think Vegapunk and Lilith will survive and York. I think Vegapunk, York and Lilith will survive Ooh. the situation. All three of them. Okay. Um, Real and I'm quick. gonna I'm gonna say a third party shows up, and that's gonna be the unthinkable shock. I think somebody else 
will get the main W. We have so the Godasei getting a W. We have Luffy getting a W. I mean, you know, obviously they have their L's too. Like, Luffy couldn't protect all the Vegapunk, so that's it's kind of an L. The Godasei might receive an L because Luffy gets away, and he saves one of the bodies of Vegapunk. Maybe the Godasei thinks he's dead. Maybe they don't. Don't really know. But I think a third party might come in, and that might be the unthinkable shock. Because it says the outcome of the incident the following day is the unthinkable shock. We can already guess what the outcomes are, right? Like, I'm theorizing it, you're theorizing it, Vegapunk living, Vegapunk dying, what have you. Something that would be unthinkable to the audience would be somebody that we just wouldn't expect here. And that, that's, what, if, that's what I personally think. I feel like it's going to be something more outside the box. But obviously, can't see in the future. I'm not a prophet. Yeah. But th that's kind of no, where I'm throwing my coin. I like that for two reasons. I just wanted to ask, in your... Lilith goes this way, Vegapunk goes that way, York goes to Celestials, whatever. What happens to Punk Records? Are they connected? Are they still as smart as they are and they just retain their stuff and that's just like a non-factor kind of thing? I think this island might be done for. Oh, okay. So I think, I think Vegapunk's going to have to start from scratch. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, because then that fits our recycled cur idea that Ve Vegapunk becomes lobotomized and that's his brain. It's just gone. <laughs> he starts from scratch. Cool um i i almost wonder does he die from that i feel like that should just kill him right like if you got your brain destroyed wouldn't that just kill you i mean then uh, we have caribou regular person him. yeah like if somebody came to me and like chopped my head off i'd probably die but we have a guy yeah. that has an apple for a head he has the brain fruit i think he'd be okay at so, least I, I like to imagine he'd be okay so you were saying a third party if yeah. we're going to parallel it to the last time we got a pers this chain of events will lead to the last thing. Blackbeard showed up at the end. Blackbeard showed up. Yes, the Marines got what they want. They got Ace, but Blackbeard got what he wanted in Whitebeard's fruit. And that was something that we didn't really expect. We didn't even know that you could take people's fruits like that. Then, yeah. Right. Like we didn't know he essentially planned all of that to instigate that from our understanding of the situation. Right. So it's like if Blackbeard does show up, what does he do that would shock the world? Because the, taking, killing the world's strongest man, the man who can destroy the world, yeah, that's crazy, right? But from, like, what, does he take something? Or does he kill a, does he kill Kizaru? Does he kill the Imagine Gorsi? Imagine he that? kills Kizaru and takes his devil fruit too. Yeah, and then he's light, <laughs> dark, and, like, that would be, because when you said that, I was like, huh, that and third party, that would shock the yeah, world. Like, there's Admiral a lot of third dying? parties that could show up here. It could be Blackbeard. It could be the Revs. It could be Cross Guild. You know, it could be the Grand Fleet. Like, that's like the now. that's the funny thing. It's like there there's just still so many options here. Yeah, Oda yeah. hasn't sealed off any door. Gorosei's guy's not dying though, right? Absolutely. I, I don't think so. Like, I, I think not it's even too, point zero I mean, two, zero I, one? too early. It's kind of funny to say considering we're a thousand chapters in and Oda wants to end it soon. But I still feel like it might be too early to beat a Gorosei member, or to even like yeah. kill him off, right? yeah because he's a fan oh, favorite man, character so the the fan base would cry if saint saturn died yeah i'm just I like you know uh last thing it's like the gorosei member is probably the only thing that the marine force situation didn't necessarily have like we knew sort of how strong the admirals were we knew that they were beyond luffy right from uh aokiji and then like their powers we do knew, know their powers kizaru we, we saw that but it wasn't like as nebulous as a Gorosei guy, right? And Whitebeard wasn't like that either. Yeah, we knew he was we the world's strongest man. Shatter the thing. We the introduction he breaks like all of the tectonic plates there, right? It's, but the Gorosei guy is kind of above that. It, it's it's kind of funny when you think about it because Luffy up to Marineford has beaten multiple warlords to the yeah. point where he looks at him and it's kind of equal footing. And then we have the admirals that tower above them. It's yeah. kind of the same way here where Luffy beat Yonkos, an admiral. Probably, Pretty much on the same level as Kizaru, right? Luffy's stronger mm -hmm. than him. He, he's beaten Yonkos before that are probably stronger than Kizaru. Yeah. It is what it is. We can argue about who's stronger, and you know, later on, because <laughs> I don't really think it matters, right? Is Kizaru stronger than Kaido? Probably, yeah, but Brago maybe on a bad Cold. day. Like, we don't really know. Uh, yeah, that, that's yeah, the moral yeah. of the story. They never fought. Yeah. I but guess the Gorosei would be that. It, it's kind of like that, right? Luffy was on the same level as Warlords in Marineford, but the Admirals towered. Luffy's on the same ad or level as Admirals, but the Gorosei member could be the towering factor now, like you said. Yeah. Like, that's kind yeah. of how I see it. Could be different, but obviously, I guess we'll find out in the next chapter when Egghead Island is over. Yeah. 
I just thought that was a really funny comment. Like, no hate, but I just thought that was hilarious. They're like, oh, Egghead's gonna be over next week. Will it change your mind when Yudron puts out a video and it's 1079 in Gorowase says, like, end of Egghead somehow, you know what I mean? Like, or or, like, next chapter, like, I get, I get lambasted. Like, the end of the chapter, no, like, the start of the chapter, it says, Egghead Island, the end. And then it's yeah. like, we're on the next island. Oh we just skip over my god, it. imagine that. I, oh, like, we don't even know horrible. what happens, and we just, like, time We have to piece it together. I would yeah, we, I would absolutely hate that. Like, the, the next chapter, Luffy's on Elbath. <laughs> I would, I would, I think I would, might need to take, like, a break from chapters if that Dude, was the case. I, I would be so lost. Just next chapter, Luffy's on Laugh, or he's on Elbath. Uh, Shanks is gone. You know, we have, yeah. like, a reign of, like, Pythagoras is with us. <laughs> you know, the crew's missing. Zoro's missing both his arms. Oh, like, Sanji has no know. legs. Like, what? Like, how would we interpret that? Like, I, 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 I don't, don't even know. Why, when you said all of that, it became more, like, probable. Like, will <laughs> no shock way. the world? No, no, no. The thing is, like, will shock the world. We're thinking about in the story, but like, Oda bro, likes breaking. He's the fourth breaking wall. the fourth wall. He's talking shocked the us. world, and we just skip. Luffy has an eye patch. Zoro opened his other eye. Like, when you think about shocking the world, you could do Luffy's, it. Is what you just said. Luffy's not there anymore. It's actually Demaro Black cosplaying as Luffy. Oh God! <laughs> the unthinkable event. If right. that happens, I would take a break. That would be. And, I, I don't even know what to say to that. Like, I yeah. Would I talk about the chapter? Would I would I have to take a minute? Would I need to take some pills for a second? I, I guess we'll find out. With Let's that being said, out. hey, thank you, Par, for joining us once again. And thank you, everybody, who's who listened this far. We really appreciate it. Sorry I drank so much coffee. You know, a little bit hyper. But yeah, do you have anything you want to end off with, Par, before we head out? Hyper Psy is good Psy. I mean, the only thing to really uh, note is uh, that Zoro video. I think the favorite one. I think if I were to take a break from One Piece, I would I would just buckle down on the, some of those videos because need a cleanse if that were the case. Hey. But I think the main thing is uh, tune in to next Monday when me and Sai drop the next episode of Cyanide Podcast, which was the name of it the entire time. Yes, <laughs> yes. The 50-50 podcast, I, I say, what is that? It's the Cyanide yeah. Podcast. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Beautiful. have a great night, guys. Thank you. Peace.